Good evening, my name is Troy McIntosh, head of school at Worthington Christian Schools, and we are broadcasting live tonight from the broadcast studio on the campus of Worthington Christian High School. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have been having some minor technical difficulties here with our network, and so because of that, those of you watching live will not be able to see any of the graphics that we had planned, but we do plan to insert those graphics onto the tape version, so those of you who will be watching this later uh, will be able to see the visuals and the graphics uh, that are included uh, with tonight's speech. God continues to do some pretty amazing things in the lives of our uh, students and our community at Worthington Christian Schools, and uh, we're looking forward to sharing some of those with you tonight, give you a peek inside uh, some of the things that are going on at Worthington Christian. Uh, it is our daily work uh, as faculty and as a school and uh, as our students to take captive every thought in order to make it obedient to Christ. That is the primary mission uh, of a Christian school, uh, as Paul exhorts us in, in 2 Corinthians. I will tonight primarily be focusing on our four priorities of our strategic plan. Uh, the first priority is teaching and learning. The second priority uh, has to do with faculty. The third priority centers on finances and communication. And the fourth on school facilities. Uh, if you have questions uh, about anything that is uh, touched on tonight, feel free to go on to uh, your Facebook comment section and type those in, and we'll take some time at the end to answer as many of those questions as we can. And if we run out of time, uh, I will certainly uh, plan to respond to everybody personally uh, as soon as possible after a word in the next couple of days. Uh, before we get started, I think all of us recognize that uh, our community has been touched by some pretty tragic events uh, over the last week or, or so, uh, both locally with uh, the tragedies involving officers Morelli and Joring in Westerville, and then a little more distant, but just uh, feeling the same kinship as a school with those at Douglas Stoneman School in Parkland, Florida. These events are tragic reminders that we live in a tumultuous and fallen world, and I think it highlights the mission and importance that we have as a Christian school to develop young people who are able to think biblically about the culture and the world that they live in. Uh, our prayers uh, are with the people who have been affected by that. We grieve with them. And yet at the same time, we want to be able to take those events and build into our students an ability to respond to them uh, as Christians ought to. School security, uh, of course, involves a lot of planning, and we spend a lot of time with that at WC. Our, we care very much about the safety of our students. And so because of that, I just want to briefly highlight some of the security uh, measures that we have taken uh, at WC, both previously and as a result of this. Um, first of all, we have comprehensive school safety and emergency plans that have been reviewed by the Department of Homeland Security and have been submitted and filed with the Ohio Attorney General's Office. Those are reviewed and refiled annually. Uh, of course, as you know, if you've been to our campuses, all of our exterior doors are locked. Nobody may enter without identifying themselves through the buzzer lock system or with if uh, they have a, a key fob. Uh, each of our classroom doors in each of our buildings are lockable from the inside with a thumb lock, not requiring a key, if we need to go into a lockdown situation, each of those rooms are quickly and easily secured uh, from the outside hallway. In addition, we have 78 security cameras across our three campuses that are monitored on a regular basis. They would be able to identify the location of any threat uh, immediately uh, if that were to happen. We have regular training for our faculty and staff um, and, uh, and our students, uh, so they're familiar with procedures should we have any kind of threat exhibit itself on campus. And then lastly, uh, as you know, we uh, have recently installed a system called Threat Extinguisher uh, on each of our campuses, which allows us to use um, high-grade military-grade pepper spray uh, so that we could put down any threat uh, that comes on campus uh, without the, uh, the concern of secondary damage to people, innocent people who might be in the way of live ammunition. Uh, we believe that's a pretty effective measure. Uh, it's also attached to an alarm system, both locally, so as soon as that canister is pulled, uh, we will be able to um, 
uh, notify everybody in the building. It'll also be uh, an, send an immediate alert to first responders in the area so that we can get um, uh, those people, uh, police, uh, responding immediately to whatever threat uh, gears up. We have 925 students in our school, and we care about each one of them. We know that they were each created in God's image. They, both have, they all have value, they all have worth, um, and they all deserve to be protected. That's 13 more students uh, than what we had last year, and so we're excited about that. Now, of those 925, some of them have been with us for a long time. Some of them are seniors who have been with us since kindergarten, and some of them have more recently joined us, even this year. Um, but to each of those, we know that uh, they... Uh, come with a high calling uh, to love, to serve them, to train and educate them um, as uh, children dearly loved by God. So we take that charge very seriously. Let me brag on some of those students uh, for just a little bit. There are literally hundreds of examples I could give. I want to share a handful of them. Uh, first of all, we just recently announced that our senior class this year has two National Merit Scholarship finalists in Jake Strick and Barrett Bowen. Just to give you an idea uh, how prestigious this is for our students, there are only 15,000 National Merit finalists nationwide um, and probably several hundred in Ohio. So with over 800 high schools in the state, for us to uh, have two in our senior class, we're pretty excited about that. Congratulations, Barrett and Jake. Job well done. Andrew Myhall and Everett Burns are sixth graders who were both recognized by Northwestern University uh, Midwestern Academic Talent Search uh, recently for their performance on the PSAT, which is the uh, uh, pre-SAT, uh, the, the college entrance exam, uh, that they took for eighth and ninth graders. So they took this as sixth graders, and they both finished in the top one-tenth of one percent of all sixth graders in the country. Uh, congratulations to Andrew and Everett. You guys are uh, truly examples of scholars uh, in our school. On a different note, uh, Jenna Lake is a high school student who this year started uh, care and encouragement teams. And this was Jenna came out of Jenna's heart and desire. She talks with other students to be an encouragement and support for other people in the school who just need somebody to come alongside them and encourage them. I've been the beneficiary of that when I had shoulder surgery. Uh, a few months ago, uh, they contacted me uh, and encouraged me in my recovery, and I know they're doing that literally with dozens and dozens of uh, students, faculty members, and people in our community on a regular basis. Thanks, Jennifer, for taking the lead on that. That's the kind of leadership that uh, we are excited about at WC. Uh, middle schooler Isaac Myhall uh, has taken his knowledge uh, that he's learned from his Bible courses at WC, and he's produced a website called 10capsule.com in which he is... Uh, provided a set of Bible studies for people who are new to studying the Bible. And uh, that is Isaac's desire uh, to share God's Word with other people out of what he's learned uh, here at school. And uh, a great example of somebody who's taking what he's learning and, and heeding God's call to make a difference uh, in the world around him. So thank you, Isaac, uh, for doing that. I literally could go on and on. I mean, there are so many stories that I could share uh, but I also know that there are those students uh, whose names I don't say uh, who have taken on the task of the daily grind of study, and that is their great accomplishment. And it is just as great as any accomplishment that uh, we've recognized elsewhere tonight. It is taking on the grind of sticking with long division in fourth grade when it's especially difficult and it just doesn't make sense. It's differentiating their first equations in a high school math class. It's reading a new book and trying to identify the themes uh, in that uh, piece of literature. It's writing a paper longer than they ever have before. Maybe in third grade it's a paragraph. By the time they're a sophomore or a junior, it might be five, six, seven, eight pages long. It's a grind. I've seen dozens and dozens of students laboring over their work. In elementary, it's memorizing a poem that's longer than anything they've ever memorized before and then presenting it in front of their peers. Uh, congratulations to all those that I witnessed doing that during my judging of the speech meet time. And nearly all of our students have been in the middle of those struggles. And that really is a picture of what we accomplish at WC, is when they stick with it. 
One of the things educators talk about and we know is that one of the biggest indicators of success both in school and later on in life isn't intelligence uh, so much as it is grit, the willingness and desire to stick with it even though uh, the, the, the task is a difficult one and that doesn't come easily at first. Congratulations to all those students who are unnamed, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, you, may be, you may be looking over at the dining room table right now and seeing your student engage in that process right now, and please tell them how proud we are of them as they do that. As I mentioned, we have four priorities in our uh, school strategic plan. Uh, the first one it has to do and centers on teaching and learning. This is the primary thing that we do. This is the guts of what we're about uh, as a school. I want to just share with you uh, some of the things and progress uh, and uh, projects that we have taken on uh, to make a difference in our teaching and learning. This year we have committed as a faculty to using what's called understanding by design. This is uh, an instructional design process uh, in which the lesson or unit uh, begins with the end in mind or, or is designed backwards. Uh, we start with the idea of what do we want our student outcome to be? What do we want our students to be able to understand or do at the end of this lesson? And then we design everything backwards from that. The purpose of this is to um, ha let the uh, desired outcomes inform everything in the planning process. It informs the assessment. Stepping back a little further, it informs the pedagogy. Stepping back a little bit before that, it informs the objectives that uh, we uh, develop for the lesson. Uh, so the purpose of using UBD, Understanding by Design, uh, is to uh, promote student understanding rather than just presentation of material. And we've been engaged in that process uh, really over the last 9 to 12 months. A couple of ways we've done that is all of our faculty members have gone through introductory training on Understanding by Design. Uh, secondly, we have had 10 teachers who attended a intensive three-day UBD boot camp uh, this past summer that was presented by a UBD specialist here on our campus. We sent three administrators to attend the National UBD Conference in California um, uh, within the last couple months. And currently, a cohort of 19 teachers across all three campuses are participating um, in a uh, kind of a team effort to develop, share, and implement uh, UBD-informed lesson plans. And they meet on a regular basis to talk about what they're doing, how they're implementing it, gaining ideas uh, from each other with the idea that that will continue to spread throughout our faculty uh, in the upcoming years. Uh, we'll continue to work on expanding that. We think it's a really powerful tool and really expect to see uh, our students benefit from that. Secondly, we fit that understanding by design into what we call our framework for excellence in teaching. And you may not have that graphic on there, but this is a model of excellent teaching that we've developed um, in which the top of the pyramid is, uh, stands our district-wide expected student outcomes. We have written nine of those. They're available on our website uh, under the About tab if you want to take a look at them. Uh, but an example of one of those expected student outcomes for a whole district is this. Our students will recognize that while there are multiple ways a person can view the world, the Christian worldview is unique and intellectually credible in that it provides a meta-narrative for understanding all disciplines. Thus, a graduate should be able to see how themes of creation, fall, redemption, and glorification impact one's understanding of the world and the daily decisions of life. Now, in addition to those nine district-wide ESOs that are very broad-based, each of our disciplines, each of our content areas, our subjects, have a set of ESOs that correlate directly to the content area of that discipline. Uh, then down beneath that, on, on the framework, um, go, goes our course of study, which is our broad-based um, set of instructional objectives and our, our mapping of our curriculum. And then beneath that is our individual student, individual teacher's lesson and unit plans. So we have this model for excellence that starts with our expected student outcomes and flows all the way down and informs each of those things underneath it all the way to uh, our daily lesson and unit plans. The third thing uh, that we are working on is we've made further investments in providing for students with unique learning needs. 
This is one of the key things that we've identified on our strategic plan. And we've done this this year with the addition of a new faculty member at the middle school to work with uh, students in our enrichment program. These are students who have been identified as gifted, and um, they now have a specially designed program that they're able to participate in on the gifted end of the spectrum. Um, our students with, uh, uh, have, we have unique learning needs on both ends of the ability spectrum, and we're now up to 12 uh, dedicated faculty members who work just with students uh, who have these kind of unique learning needs. Several years ago, we recognized this was an area that we weren't particularly strong in. And so we contracted with a group called the CLC Network. And they came in and spent a number of days on campus as a consultant, uh, interviewing, auditing, producing a report for us with a set of recommendations that we've been implementing progressively over the last several years. And we've gotten to the point now where uh, what was once a weakness uh, for our school, working with students with unique learning needs, um, we are now at the point where it's such a strength that it was noted as a major commendation in this fall's accreditation uh, report uh, from the visiting team that we had from ACSI. So we're really excited about that and happy that we can serve those, those, kind of, those uh, students in our school. A fourth thing that we're doing is similar to what I just talked about with our uh, intervention and enrichment program, uh, we have contracted with a consultant uh, called Vartec uh, to do an instructional uh, technology and infrastructure audit. So this team has come in and actually has spent, uh, spent several days with us and over the course of several weeks, and they're in the process of crafting a similar report that we received for intervention and enrichment for our I, uh, instructional technology and, and infrastructure. Uh, we expect to get that report in the next couple of weeks, and as we look forward to its recommendations, we look forward to implementing uh, those things and really becoming uh, the kind of uh, uh, school that uses technology in an effective way. Not technology for technology's sake, that's one of the things we were very clear uh, with Vartech we didn't want to do. But we do recognize that there are some pretty powerful tools in uh, instruction that uh, we can leverage technology with, and we're committed to doing a better job with that. Um, one of the new things that I know a lot of the students at our high school have taken advantage of this year is our new partnership with Mount Vernon Nazarene University so that uh, we are offering College Credit Plus classes on our high school campus taught by our high school faculty that students receive transferable college credit through Mount Vernon uh, Nazarene University. We have about 40 students that are currently taking advantage of that um, and they can earn up to 22 hours of college credit by the time they graduate. Uh, they can enter in and have a semester and a half worth of college credit uh, before they even step on uh, their chosen campus for college. So that's been a great program, and we look forward to continuing that and, and improving that over the years uh, in our partnership with Mount Vernon. Next, we're continuing to show improvement in our students' math performance. If you recall, a couple years ago, if you were with us, we made a shift in our math curriculum and approach to a, uh, a program called Math in Focus. Um, and it was, it was a considerable change and shift in how we approach our mathematics instruction. We're pleased to report that we now have two years' worth of data on that, uh, that shift and its effect on our students' performance. And I just want to share with you a couple things. Our star math assessments for all of our students in the elementary school indicate that our students over these two years have averaged over 13 months of growth over the nine months of a, of a school year. So that's almost one and a half years of growth in each year. That is great news. We are so excited about that. That really matches some of the anecdotal reports that we're getting back from teachers. I had one teacher tell me that she couldn't believe that, who's been teaching at the grade level for a number of years, she would have never believed that students at her grade level uh, would have been able to perform mathematically as they are under our new um, uh, instructional approach. In addition, our students' Terra Nova scores, those are the standardized test scores that they take every year, uh, from last year, or from the last year of our previous math instructional program, to our most recent scores with math and focus, uh, show better performance at all grade levels, with an average improvement in the mean percentile rank 
of almost six percentile ranks. That's a, that's a pretty significant uh, improvement uh, in our math performance, and we're excited to be able to uh, continue to, to use that and develop our students' mathematical thinking. Lastly, I just want to share a few examples of typical learning projects uh, from this year. Some of these may be familiar with some of you because you've seen your kids uh, engage in these. Our fifth grade's uh, Ben Carson Reading Challenge was pretty cool. I was invited by the fifth grade to come down uh, a few weeks ago uh, because each of the students in fifth grade was challenged uh, to read, just like Ben did, I guess, when he was uh, a young boy, to read seven books and then create seven mini-projects based on those books. <clears throat> One of those books was a Margaret, Peter a Margaret Peterson Haddock's book. And one of the cool things is the author came to school uh, to, to, to uh, speak with the kids uh, at the end of the challenge. Uh, so uh, when I went down there uh, from the invitation, the students um, had one student in particular was so excited, she took me around and gave me a tour uh, so that I could see all the mini projects uh, that the students had done. Uh, and they really kind of decked out their room to kind of tell the story of their reading progress over that. <clears throat> Secondly, while I was given a tour at the middle school uh, a few weeks ago, I walked into uh, Debbie Gillen's eighth grade biology class, and um, there, were, there was a science lab uh, that was out. And uh, there were Petri dishes throughout, and the eighth grade students were doing a study on bacteria and bacteria colonization. And so they had gone around to various spots in the middle school where they thought uh, would be ripe for uh, high levels of bacteria. Uh, and they swabbed each of those areas, brought them back, cultured them, and then uh, spent the next several days watching their colonization and observing uh, the growth in that bacteria. The good, the good news is our cleaning crew there was super proud that uh, there was minimal bacteria growth, particularly in areas where the students thought uh, would be uh, high uh, growth uh, high growth areas for the bacteria. So kudos to the uh, cleaning crew uh, at the middle school. We're excited about that. And then lastly, at the high school, you've had a chance, if you've been on social media, our AP art students have been presenting their AP art shows. I'm looking out through the window in the studio room and seeing some of those uh, pieces of art right now. Our students in our art program do an amazing job, and every year they continue to uh, um, score very highly on the advanced placement uh, scores where they submit a portfolio to a, an expert panel and those are judged and they receive college credit uh, from that as well, separate from the College Credit Plus program I mentioned earlier. So uh, uh, I give a lot of credit to our uh, art department from kindergarten all the way to high school to produce the, the, the kinds of artists uh, and creative types that uh, we have. If you haven't had a chance to see that on social media, you can go in and just, just pick one of the students' videos to watch as they explain how they've developed their project over the course of the year. It's fascinating, and congratulations to all of them for completing that. The second uh, priority that we have in our strategic plan centers on faculty. And I want to share with you uh, uh, what we have called the four pillars of effective teaching. This is uh, a model of what we describe what the effective teacher, Christian school teacher, looks like. And again, uh, those of you who see this on tape will be able to see the graphic uh, for that. But the four pillars uh, center on, first of all, first pillar has to do with professional knowledge. That idea that a teacher has to have a certain uh, level of content knowledge that they can use to pass on beyond an instructional level. They have to be masters of their content so that they can pass that knowledge on at a deep level to students. The second pillar has to do with planning and preparation. And this has to do with the organization and design of the instruction. This is where understanding by design fits in, uh, where I talked about earlier. Uh, you can have all the content knowledge in the world, but without effective design and planning, you're never going to be able to transfer that to the students. So both those first two pillars are important. The third pillar has to do with instructional techniques. This has to do with pedagogical methods. So the way they communicate to students, um, how uh, effectively ideas are broken down and presented. Uh, how they respond to students' questions and so forth. <clears throat> and then the, the last pillar has to do with student assessment of student performance and then assessment of their own lessons. That's a critical component. And before I got into teaching, I assumed that was a rather simple task, right? You taught the students content, and then you gave them a test, and you assessed it. I'm here to tell you assessment is a complex task, and we're committed to helping our teachers 
uh, develop in that area. As a matter of fact, last year's professional development centered on assessment literacy, and we brought um, we had a day and a half with a uh, assessment specialist uh, that we brought in uh, to help our teachers develop good assessment tools uh, for what they're doing. So if you imagine these four pillars are now built on this foundation of biblical integration. And so all four of them rest on the ability to take scriptural knowledge and scriptural concepts and apply them as touchstones to each of those four areas. So we're committed to continue to build those ideas into our faculty. <clears throat> we know that faculty are our most valuable resource, and the extent to which we can have our faculty and build into them this model, uh, we know that's the extent that we'll, we'll be able to be successful uh, as teachers for our students. Now, we also this year develop a new teacher evaluation protocol that utilizes and implements these four pillars. This new protocol was developed out of our academic, uh, our Department of Teaching and Learning uh, by Tom Burns, as, and he collaboratively worked with a committee of faculty members for about 12 months looking at the best research on teacher evaluation, uh, what kinds of things are effective, what kinds of things are not, and out of that they developed uh, this uh, evaluation protocol that we have then put into um, an online uh, tool that's called TeachPoint. <clears throat> And this online tool allows our supervisors to keep a, a real-time conversation going with each of our faculty members as they do observations, as they send conference notes, um, observation notes, and so forth. It's a pretty powerful tool, and we're able to customize that so that it matches what we have identified as our models for effective teaching. We're excited about that. This was We were just finishing up the first year of implementing uh, the new protocol, and I think it's uh, received uh, very good reviews by everybody involved. Uh, we think it's going to be a real effective uh, tool as we continue to work and develop our teachers in the future. That's a big part of what we do here. Uh, we also uh, have implemented what we're calling the Professional Development Academy, or PD Academy. This is the WCS-based program for professional development of our teachers. <clears throat> Just to give you a brief description of what this looks like, we have asked each of our faculty members to complete 10 hours of continuing education. This is in addition or complementary to other requirements that they have to satisfy for their state and ACSI certification. Uh, they have to complete at least 10 hours of continuing education in the Professional Development Academy, and we offer a range of classes um, and opportunities for them to do that. <clears throat> in addition, each of our new faculty members uh, have to complete six classes in the Professional Development Academy within the first three years. So any teacher new to WC, whether they've taught before or they're fresh out of college, goes through uh, this um, uh, set of classes. The two classes that we're offering this year, just to give you an idea what they're like, uh, we completed in the first semester one called The Formation of the Christian Educator. And there we talked about what does it mean to be uh, a Christian teacher? What are the kinds of traits and characteristics and outcomes, desires, and why are we engaged in this profession? What does it mean to be called to teach? Uh, and then this semester, or this semester, we are hitting them heavy with uh, UBD concepts, understanding by design, and training them how to begin to implement that uh, into their lessons. And then lastly, under faculty, we're excited this year after a number of years of trying to determine how we can do this. We have been able to expand our student counseling services into both the elementary and the middle school. So Nancy Seacrest, we freed her up from some of her responsibilities uh, with testing and so forth at the high school so that she can take her skills and gifts as a counselor, that's what she's trained to do, down on a weekly basis uh, to uh, work with our elementary and middle school students who can benefit from that type of counseling. So we're thrilled to be able to offer that and we think that's a real bonus uh, uh, to our students. The third priority in the strategic plan centers on finances and communication. Uh, I'm pleased to let you know that fiscal year 2017 ended once again with a balanced budget. <laughs> and that's uh, our budget for that year was around seven and a half, mil seven and a half million dollars. Uh, we expect to finish this year again with a very modest uh, surplus, but that won't be without challenges. Uh, we run on very tight margins uh, at Worthington Christian, and uh, we are more than willing to share what our budget looks like with any uh, stakeholder uh, who wishes to see it. If you just call the main office, we'll be sure to get you a copy of that. We'll even sit down with you and answer any questions that you might have 
uh, but we're m more than willing to, uh, to share that with you. Some of the challenges that come with this, though, even though we changed our um, health care coverage for our employees this year, uh, we are still incurring uh, $125,000 of unanticipated costs uh, associated with health care. Those of you who deal with health care or budgets uh, in your uh, career know the ongoing challenges of trying to maintain or contain those uh, costs. Uh, we're committed to doing it. Uh, but you can imagine on, a, on a, a, a budget with tight margins the impact that $125,000 uh, has on that. But we are making adjustments uh, necessary. Uh, and one of them, uh, just so you know, um, our, our teachers, we, beginning May 1st, we are doing what's called a spousal carve-out. So um, any employee whose spouse is eligible for health care at his or her employment are are leaving the WCS plan to go uh, onto the plan that they have in their employment. So uh, that's going to save us a considerable amount of money and help us close that gap, uh, not just this year, but more, more, really more in future years. Um, but it's one, of the, it's one of the things that we've asked our teachers uh, and employees to do. Our parent surveys uh, have indicated uh, that communication continues to be a strong point for us. Uh, in fact, uh, what uh, was rated as one of our weaknesses not long ago, consistently, for years actually, uh, has now been turned into one of our strengths. And that is reflected not only in the parent surveys that we've recently completed for our accreditation, but it was also noted, again, as one of our, the major commendations that we received on our accreditation report uh, from last fall by ACSI. Just to give you a couple ideas of some of the things we're doing with our communications and marketing, we have uh, implemented a brand new online application and enrollment process. So those of you who are already in and remember all those pieces of paper that we used to ask you to complete, we're getting away from that and we are now doing that entirely online. There was a huge uh, commitment from probably a dozen different uh, people uh, in our uh, uh, on our staff in order to get that done from IT to finance to marketing to admissions all of them pulled together to really put together a really nice plan for online application enrollment to make it a, uh, the best possible experience for prospective families. Secondly, and those returning families do know this, we've eliminated the re-enrollment process. So all those re-enrollment paper, uh, paperwork that you used to do uh, every spring for each of your kids is now gone uh, and uh, there is uh, a continue, we've gone to a continuous enrollment model and we're looking forward to, uh, we're just thankful that we're able to uh, ease that burden uh, from our uh, continuing uh, families. And then many of you are using the WCS app, I know either on your iPhone or your smartphone, and that has been a huge uh, boost to our communication that uh, we are able to, to at a, uh, a single one-stop area, provide school-wide information as well as uh, building specific information and we're um, uh, happy to be able to provide that and see that continue to grow and develop. And I know a lot of you are interacting with us on our social media accounts and that's great. As a matter of fact, one of the most amazing <laughs> statistics that I've come across is uh, a lot of you have uploaded pictures to the, our Smug Mug account and a lot of you are viewing them because since the beginning of the school year we have had over 3 million views of pictures on our Smug Mug account. And that, that number just, just bottles my mind that uh, we have that many. But I know a lot of you are viewing and uploading that. A lot of you are uh, following us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And uh, we continue to want to provide you with the kind of communication and quality content that will help you know exactly what's going on uh, during the school and feel uh, as, as well informed as we possibly can, can, uh, can do for you. The fourth priority has to do with facilities, and this is a, this is a significant uh, issue for us. As you know, we've been engaged in a Forward Together Capital campaign uh, for the last several years, um, and we're pleased to announce that we have raised over $6.5 million uh, toward that. We had initially planned to communicate to you what the next steps were uh, on Forward Together. We are going to have to delay that for a very short period of time, 
Uh, we still plan to communicate that to you. We ran into a, a, a hurdle uh, that has to do with uh, our, our construction of the, the new building uh, for the high school. We were notified uh, two weeks ago that a change in building code that just occurred uh, is going to require us to make a change in our new building that is going to cost us an additional $400,000 that we had not originally budgeted uh, in it. So you can imagine what we are um, considering options and determining how to best approach that. But because of that, we've had to delay um, uh, kind of un unveiling uh, what our uh, next step plans are. We've also had some other construction uh, cost increases as a result primarily of the hurricanes. <laughs> they have caused uh, both a labor and material uh, increase uh, in costs. And so we're trying to manage that as well. But we look forward to communicating to you in the very near future uh, what the next steps are uh, for Forward Together. Uh, just to keep in mind what we're attempting, trying to accomplish, we want to be able to provide our students with top quality uh, learning spaces. Perhaps the biggest thing that we've done this year has been able to move out of the modulars into uh, the main building at the middle school. That has gotten students out of outdated, outmoded learning spaces into high quality learning spaces that just afford us to do a lot of things that we were never able to do. We want to be able to continue to do that uh, with Worthington Christian, particularly at the high school, and really be able to set our high school facilities up for the next four decades. Um, we want to have improved faculty collaboration op collaborative opportunities. Um, and perhaps most importantly, we want to be able to address the single biggest security issue that we have, which is uh, our students moving between two buildings at the high school. Um, the recent events only highlight our commitment to getting that done and our need to solve that security problem for our students. So as I mentioned, we've, met, we've raised over six and a half million dollars so far. Uh, it's been a long road and one which we are extremely grateful to each of you who have personally contributed and generously donated uh, over that time. Uh, we hope to have a very, an announcement in the very near future uh, about uh, what uh, our plans are for that. Two things I do know though, we remain committed to getting this project done. Uh, what we began with the elimination of the middle school modulars, uh, we plan to finish uh, by addressing the same kind of needs with our high school. That commitment remains solid and firm. Secondly, we are also committed to doing it without putting us in a financially untenable position. So part of the reason this has taken several years to accomplish is our commitment to not take on a, 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 a debt load or a position which is going to make it difficult for us to maintain uh, budget sustainability. So that commitment also remains. And we will be patient uh, until we are confident that we can do that. At the same time, I, want, I just want to affirm our commitment to getting this project done. Uh, we've, we've gone too far and uh, to stop, to look back, and we know this is part of what God's call uh, is on us uh, in our work. Uh, we're excited about the progress we've made. Uh, that first step of getting out of the modulars uh, and putting the middle school into the main building has been a huge boon. Now we want to finish that uh, with construction. And again, we'll, we'll keep you filled in as uh, those details come. Just to talk a little bit about a few of the challenges. I mean, one of the challenges is obviously the, the, the Forward Together campaign. Uh, we look forward to completing that, but we still have some work to do, both in terms of raising funds and determining what kinds of modifications to the uh, construction plan we can make in order to make this uh, viable. But again, the kinds, of, the kinds of challenges that we're currently facing are the high school security issue as students walk between buildings. Uh, we have music practice space issues. Uh, students are our are, are, are best musicians and vocal um, uh, musicians need additional practice space outside of just the main area. And that's what we want to provide for in the new, uh, in the new building. We need to be able to provide new science labs for the high school and any science labs for our middle school. Our middle school science teachers do an amazing job being limited by the lack of real lab space uh, for their program. 
uh, an expanded media center space in all of our buildings. We're looking forward to being able to provide that. And then lastly, we want to be able to address the location of the elementary school. It has become too far south for the majority of our families, and that's the number one reason families tell us they don't come to our elementary school is because it's just too far of a drive uh, for them when they're coming from northern Franklin County or Delaware County. A lot of them are telling us, we love WC, but we'll see you in middle school when we don't have to drive so far. And we want to be able to address that issue in our facility plan as well. I mentioned also one of the challenges is the increasing cost of health care. Uh, we continue to work with um, our providers um, and looking at unique solutions uh, to the challenges that come with the increasing costs of providing quality health care for our employees. A third challenge has to do with faculty recruitment and development. You can see the, one of the biggest things I talked about tonight was the efforts that we're putting into our faculty. Our faculty are what one, uh, one well-regarded Christian school administrator calls the gold in the bank. They are our best resource, and we need to be able to invest in them, both in terms of bringing teachers in who are high quality, and then once they're here, uh, develop in them a heart for teaching, the skills for teaching, and uh, the ability to um, be the kind of living curriculum that uh, we know we want our teachers to be. I recently, last week actually, went on a three-day recruiting trip with our human resources director to some of the best Christian colleges uh, in uh, the Midwest uh, as an attempt to just let them know Worthy New Christian is a place that values high-quality teachers and we look forward to continuing to, uh, uh, to recruit that, uh, to recruit the best candidates uh, to bring in the WC. And then the last challenge I want to note, and maybe the most important one, is the challenge of developing a Christian mind in an increasingly hostile culture. Uh, I read an article recently about the shifting demographics that, are being, that the post-millennial generation uh, is bringing. Not, not the millennial generation anymore, but our current students are in this post-millennial generation that takes those millennial ideas and moves them even further down the road. Some of them uh, are considered as uh, real benefits and pluses to them, but there are real challenges built within the post-millennial mindset, particularly as it relates to developing a biblical concept and a biblical understanding in them. There are areas related to sexuality, race, gender, uh, issues related to, fair, uh, to fear, despair, and stress. Uh, as a matter of fact, our counseling department is working right now on a program for students to help address stress levels uh, in students. We recognize that's a, that's a real part of the post-millennial generation. The headlines uh, that I saw just this morning uh, on uh, one news site uh, quoted a student, uh, a current student that says, every day we have to fear for our lives now. Now, that seems to us like a foreign idea, but to somebody who's grown up in an age of school shootings and school security problems, that's a real, uh, a real the fear is real, uh, and we need to be able to provide an appropriate response to that. Alienation. Uh, digital and other addictions, divisions in our community. We no longer have a shared language uh, among our people. And so these are the kind of things that we have to work against um, and, and, and address with our students and begin to give them a foundation so they know what a Christian ought to respond, how a Christian ought to respond uh, to these cultural moods and shifts. That is a significant challenge. Developing the mind of Christ in our students in a world that is increasingly hostile to that idea. Uh, and yet that's a challenge that we take on every day, and we really look forward uh, to doing that. I'm going to ask you to pray for Worthington Christian. Um, we're not going to give in to these challenges, I know that. Um, Joshua's call to be strong and courageous, uh, to not give in to fear or discouragement. Uh, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go is a very real uh, promise that we cling to. But we know that it'll come as people are praying for us as a school, praying for our teachers, praying for our students, uh, and the work that uh, goes on here at Worthington Christian every day. We value you as members of our community, and uh, we know that your prayers will have a powerful effect on the work that we do every day. 
Lastly, I want to invite all of you to attend Susical the Musical <laughs> uh, for four performances this Thursday through Saturday. Our high school drama department is awesome. If you haven't had a chance uh, to see any of their productions, I encourage you to do that. We have a Thursday night performance, a Friday night performance, a Saturday afternoon, and a Saturday night performance. Information is available on our website. Uh, you can go there. Uh, information on how to order tickets. We encourage you to get them in advance if you can. Um, <clears throat> If you can't, you can show up at the door on a first-come, first-served basis. But students are free. Uh, there's a small charge uh, for other community members uh, to come see that. But uh, this is a, it's a really fun play if you haven't seen it before. And Dave O'Rourke and our drama students do an awesome job doing this. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed uh, if you spend an evening with us uh, doing that. So thanks again for your investment in WC. Um, uh, I'm not sure if we might have some uh, questions from Facebook. Nobody? Don't, no questions. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. <laughs> um, if you do have questions afterwards and you want to uh, post them onto Facebook, I will respond to them uh, as soon as possible in the next couple of days. So if you're laying in bed tonight and you wish, why didn't I ask Troy that question? You can put it on Facebook and uh, we'll still get back to you even though we uh, didn't have a chance to do it live. Thank you for joining us. If you've made it through this entire time, I want to thank you. Uh, that shows your love and, and uh, commitment to our school and to our students, and we are so thankful and grateful. It's a great community to be a part of. Uh, the 24 years I've been a part of it has been uh, life-changing for me, and I want to be able to share that kind of experience with the rest of you, too. Thanks again. Have a good evening. Uh, God bless.